I don't know about you, but I have to have seen at least, I'm gonna be serious, a thousand videos on off-camera flash. So why the heck am I making another one? Because most of what I've seen out there overcomplicates how easy this really should be. And a lot of photographers come away wondering if they'll ever understand it. You'll understand it. I'm gonna simplify it to the point that you can't miss. Let me just get a cup of coffee and we'll get into it. All right, let's get right into this. Off-camera flash is very simple to do. It's very simple theoretically. It's very simple in reality. It's just very simple. If you've been a subscriber to this channel for a while, you'll know that when I talk about flash, I often say you need one of these guys. Well, you do in a sense, or let's say it this way. I use this because I want my lights set up before my client gets there. I'm a professional. I don't want the client to see me setting exposure. That's as simple as it is. Can the light meter be a little more accurate? Sure. In the film days, it was vital. In the digital age, it is not vital. If you are able to have your subject stand in front of your lens, do a few, three or four, not many, test exposures, you don't need the light meter to get good off-camera flash results. And what I'm gonna show you works outside in shade, outside in full sun, or indoors. It works the same way. It always works the same way. And I'm gonna get started helping you understand this by explaining just what it is you're trying to do when you use off-camera flash. Off-camera flash, all you're doing is adding light to whatever the ambient light level is to make the subject's exposure look pleasing. Okay, that's it, you're done. Really, you kinda are, okay? That's all it is. You're adding light to an ambient exposure to get a pleasing exposure that you like. What the heck am I talking about? Well, you're looking at it. It's just using a constant light, right? There is, a, there is an amount of light in this room that is already here before I added this light. This shadow under my jaw here is the amount of light that's in the room. The light that's coming from this light would be the equivalent of an off-camera flash. That's it. The light you see behind me, that's the ambient light in the room. This light brings my facial exposure up a little bit. It's that simple. Let me draw a diagram of what we're doing here. So here, this is a top-down view, looking down on a subject. Subject, camera, camera back here, okay? Very simple, stick figures, ugly drawing. Okay, wherever this subject is, wherever they are, if they're outside, inside, doesn't matter. There's a level of light that surrounds them and is on them. That's your base exposure. If you don't wanna use a light meter, you look through your camera and get a reading of everything but the subject. You have to not worry about the subject because you're gonna add light to make the subject look good. What you want is an exposure of your background. Does that make sense? It's really that simple. It, imagine you're shooting a landscape. There's your base exposure. After that, you're gonna add light to make your subject look good. So what you're gonna do is, and start with this as a, as a rough guide. 45 degrees off camera axis and slightly above subject. So your flash would be over here somewhere, right? And the light's gonna do this. And it's gonna have the effect, just like this light does on my face, off to the side and up. So that's your light position, okay? How far away it is, how all of that depends on the flash you're using. Well, how can it be that simple? Well, why would it be more complicated? It is that simple. You have an exposure through your camera of the background, you add light to bring the face or whatever of your subject up to a level that's pleasing. 
There's a couple of things to consider. One, whether you want your subject brighter than the background or the same as the background, right? So if you look at my exposure right here, I'm a little bit brighter than the background. So what you want to do is have your background about a three quarters of a stop below what your camera says and then add light to your subject. That's it. That's really it. He keeps saying add light to my subject. That's why I'm here. I want to know how to add light to my subject. Okay, let's talk about that. I have to make a recommendation as use the simplest possible flash you can. Simple speed light, simple flash trigger. The only recommendation I'd make, and I'll put links to these in the comments, is that the flash trigger can control the amount of light from the camera position. That makes your life a whole lot easier that you don't have to keep running back and forth and changing your flash power. What's the procedure? You're at your camera position, you've got your flash in position and your trigger's working your flash. So you get your background exposure, decide if you want to lower it a little bit or leave it equal, and then take an exposure. Your subject should be shaded slightly, not silhouette. Your background should be well exposed. Then put your flash, and this is gonna take a little experience. Remember, we're not using the meter, so you're gonna to have to allow yourself to get a little experience here. Set your flash at a, a level that's below what you need or higher, you'll find out real quick. Do an exposure. You may see a little light on your subject's face, you may not. Add a little bit more. Do another exposure. Your subject's face should be coming up. If not, you're off sync speed, that's important. You've got to know the sync speed of your camera. You can't be going too fast for your camera's sync speed. Not going into that in this video. But all things being equal, if all your equipment is working, as you work the power up, the, the exposure on the subject's face should be increasing. That's it. If you're outside in shade, that's one way to go. If you're outside in sun, what I'm gonna recommend is that you put the sun either off the back of your subject one way, off of one corner or the other, but not in front. You, you want the sun behind your subject so it's coming from either side. Behind is okay, straight behind is okay. It, it's a little more pleasing from either angle. You don't want it in your subject's eyes because you'll get this, not nice. If you're in full sun, you're, what you'll have to do is you'll have to have a slightly stronger flash. You've heard the term overpowering the sun. That's what you're doing here. You, you need enough flash to bring the subject out of shade to match that full sun exposure. It's just about flash power. It's not a different technique. All you're doing is raising the exposure of the subject to match wherever you are with your background, whether it's in shade or in sun. So how do you choose flashes for off-camera flash? Basically, Honestly, it's all about power. As long as you can control your power from camera position, which I highly recommend because it's so easy to do today, the flash you use is about the power you need. So two flashes here, right? I've got a speed light and my trusty AD200. This is about three to four times more powerful than this. It's all about, does it have enough power for your subject? How do you tell? With this guy, it's gonna have to be fairly close, especially if you use a modifier or a softbox or something. It's gonna have to be fairly close to your subject, especially outside. If it's got enough power and it can be far enough to be out of your camera view, good, you're good to go. If you need more power and, or you need to flash further away or you're covering a big group or you're trying to use it in full sun, you'll need something like this or larger. It's not complicated. It's about how much power you need for what you're trying to shoot. Okay, that's the mechanics. That's how you do this. Other things you'll have to understand though. You'll have to understand whether or not you want a modifier for this. I'll show some shots here of behind the scenes from different sessions I've shot and you'll see modifiers on the flash. Every session I shoot outside uses this exact same technique. There is no difference for me, there's no difference for you, except I use this to set my light power before my client steps in front of my lens. That's it. It really is this simple, guys. You wanna experiment. 
experiment, experiment, experiment. You'll get to the point where you put someone in front of your lens outdoors if you used to work in there, and you're gonna get real close to setting that flash power. And it's such a nice addition to your photography arsenal that you don't have to depend on what light you find. You can make your own light. You can make your own photography like Ansel Adams said. Make your pictures, don't take your pictures. There's a lot more to it. If you've got more questions about this, about different aspects of this, there are many things we can go into. I've got a whole playlist of flash photography videos. Otherwise, until the next video, thanks for watching. Cheers.